Hello everyone, this is Professor Klorman speaking. It's my pleasure to welcome you to MUTH 150. As you know, we'll be using a remote delivery format this semester. That's probably a new experience for many of us. It's my first time teaching this type of course, and probably for many of you, it's your first time studying in this kind of course. So this video will explain how the course is organized, how you can get the most out of it. This is the sort of thing I might typically explain at a first class meeting. I thought it would be just efficient to share it with you in this video. Here's an overview. This video is divided into four sections. First, I'll give an outline about the course. Then I'll give you some ideas how to get started. What are some things you need to do to get set up right away to begin the course? We'll walk you through a typical weekly schedule, what a week in this course will look like. And then we'll discuss ways to ask questions or get extra help throughout the semester. Just a petit mot aux étudiants francophones. Bienvenue à McGill. Le cours se déroulera en anglais, mais je tenais à mentionner qu'il est possible d'activer les sous-titrages codés générés par ordinateur pour toutes les vidéos comme celle-ci, si cela est utile. S'il s'agit de votre premier cours de théorie musicale en anglais, nous avons également un guide de vocabulaire de théorie musicale français-anglais en ligne qui peut être utile. D'accord, c'est la dernière fois que je vous soumets à mon français dans ce cours. So, back to English. So about this course, just a word about the students who are in this course. You come from a wide variety of backgrounds and you're in a variety of different situations. Some of you are Bachelor of Music students at Schulich School of Music. Some of you are Bachelor of Arts students uh, from the Faculty of Arts. Some of you will have studied music theory before, maybe at Sejep or in a conservatoire or in some other setting. But for some of you, this is your very first time studying music theory. Some of you have a background working on music in English. Others of you, this is your first time taking an English language course about music. I suspect many of us are located in Montreal for this semester, but I'm aware that there are students uh, located all over the globe who are taking this course. So let's do our best to be flexible and supportive of one another, especially at the beginning of the course, since we're all coming at it from different places. If you are located in a remote time zone, like if you are in East Asia or Oceania, you should be registered probably for section 003. That section for the tutorial is scheduled at a special time to accommodate students in remote time zones. Please email me if I can help resolve any issues. So let's talk through some specifics about the course. This is the first course in a suite of courses taken by most Bachelor of Music students at Schulich School of Music. So to proceed from MUTH 150 into 151, you'll need to earn a final grade of C or higher in this course. The focus is on harmonic analysis and voice leading in tonal music. And we've broadened the repertoire this year. In previous versions of the course, it's been mostly Baroque music. Now we'll cover a variety of different styles. And we've also increased the representation of music by women and by people of color in the course. This is an intro course, it's an introduction, but it does assume you have some prior background. Specifically, MUTH 150 assumes you're pretty good with things like key signatures, scales, intervals, triad qualities and inversions, seventh chord qualities and inversions. If those ideas are new for you, you probably should take MUTH 100 concurrently, take 100 together with 150. If you're not sure, my advice is to start off taking 100, and you can decide over the course of the first few weeks whether you'd like to continue or whether you'd like to drop it. There's also some review or practice materials covering some of those subjects online on a site called My Courses that I'll explain in a moment. And as I mentioned in French, but I'll say it again in English, we also have a guide to terms in English and French that might be a helpful reference. So how to get started. One of the first things you should do is visit My Courses. That's our course website. So you want to go to mycourses2.mcgill.ca and you log in with your McGill ID and password. Then you want to click on Fall 2020 MUTH 150 001. The 001 part is important because you'll see two options. 001, that's the main site for our course. You'll also see a tutorial site with a number like 002, 003, etc. That's a separate site that is just for the tutorial part of this course. I'll explain that a bit later. But for now, click on 001. 
And once you're there, in the upper left-hand corner, you want to click on Content so you can get to the Welcome Getting Started folder. Once you click on content, it should look like this. So we have a folder called Welcome or Getting Started. In there, you can find the course outline, which is the same thing as the syllabus. You'll want to read through that very carefully. I know every professor tells you read the syllabus carefully. I really mean it because this course, since we're doing remote delivery and since it has a different format than you may be used to, I think it will be really helpful to understand the policies and procedures. To put that another way, you're responsible for all those policies that are there. So it's in your interest to read it. In that same folder, you can find information about extra help and office hours. I'll explain that later. You'll also see a link for something called the Student Cafe. It's uh, not a great cafe if you're looking for coffee or tea, but it's really what it is, is a discussion board where you can talk about really anything that's on your mind. It doesn't have to be limited to this course. If you're wondering where to get groceries in Montreal or how to register for next semester, if you have questions you just want to ask other students, you're not sure where to turn, this is not a bad place to put it. The only rule is we need to be respectful of one another on the discussion board. And in the course outline, I have some suggestions how to think about a proper etiquette for when we're using our discussion boards. So after you've checked out my courses, let's discuss some other materials you'll need for this course. First of all, we'll be using a required textbook for this course. The title is Concise Introduction to Tonal Harmony, Second Edition. It was just published this past summer. You can get it in two different versions. There's an ebook version or a physical book. And you could buy either version either from the McGill Bookstore, which is called Le James, or directly from the publisher W.W. W. Norton. I recommend the ebook, and the advantage of that is once you buy it, you have immediate access. You don't need to wait for it to be delivered or go pick it up. Um, if you live someplace far away where it takes a long time for books to be delivered, then I very strongly recommend the ebook. I should mention we'll be using this book for two terms, for MUTH 150 and for 151. So whatever the cost is for this book, you can divide by two since it'll be used for two different courses. Then. I recommend buying the MUTH 150 course pack. You can buy this again from the McGill bookstore, Le Jane's. It contains all of the weekly assignments, assignments 1 through 12, spiral bound conveniently into a course pack. It's not required. If you don't want to buy the course pack, the other option is you can download each of the assignments from my courses and print them. But if that's inconvenient for you, if you prefer to just buy it already printed, you can get it from the James Bookstore. You're also going to need access either to a scanner or a scanner mobile app. So you could download an app such as Cam Scanner, ScanBot. In the course outline, I list several different options that are recommended. The reason is when you complete your assignments, you're going to write them out by hand on paper, and then you're going to submit them as a PDF file. So the best way to get a high quality legible scan is to use either a scanner or a scanning app. Please do not use just a picture that you take with your camera app. Those are usually too dark, too blurry, or too small. So we can't accept those for credit. It's really your responsibility to get a high quality scan. If you are on campus at McGill, and if you can get yourself to one of the uprint machines, these are the photocopiers in, for example, in libraries and I think in some of the residence halls, those have a scanning function that's free. So if you have access to a McGill uprint machine, you can use that for your scanning. And lastly, you'll want some music manuscript paper and a pencil. So you can buy this at a music store, um, you can also, on my courses, you can download some blank music paper as a PDF file and print it out, or there's plenty of websites like free, uh, freemusicpaper.com sorts of things, and you can download it from there. You'll need that because we'll have some activities during our tutorials where you'll have to write some music out by hand using a pencil, so you'll really need to have some music paper in order to do that. Now, when you registered for the course, you were probably told that it meets three times per week. But actually, I've adjusted the plans since we're doing remote delivery. We're only going to meet one time per week. And the rest of the course is going to be independent, working at your own pace. I reserve the right that we can go back to the three times a week schedule if we find we need to, if we find that there's a problem with the plan that I've made. 
but in all likelihood we'll be meeting in person just one time per week. And the rest of the week is really for you to work at your own pace when it's convenient for you to work. So how is that going to work? Let me walk you through it. The first half of each week is when you're going to be working mostly independently. So instead of class time, I'm going to assign you some work to do on your own. Namely, you'll have one or two chapters from the textbook that you have to read and study each week. The chapters are actually pretty short, so you can read them very carefully and in a lot of detail. So you'll want to read those the first part of the week, definitely by Thursday. There's also a video to watch called an analysis video. That's a video that I produced, and you want to watch that by Thursday at 19 o'clock at 7 p.m. And there's also a reading quiz, one for each chapter. So each week you'll have either one reading quiz or two reading quizzes. It varies from week to week. Those are going to be on that special website, and you have to do those by Thursday at 7 in the evening, Montreal time. The only exception is in the first week, since we're just getting started, I've decided to move that deadline a little bit later. So the first reading quiz will be due by Saturday, September 5th at 7 in the evening, Montreal time. I just want to be clear, uh, that is a firm deadline. So in order to keep this course organized, to keep us pacing our learning over the course of the week, unfortunately, if you miss the reading quiz, there's not an opportunity to make it up. So it's really up to you to organize your time Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, to have some time to read, some time to watch the video, and then to be sure to take the reading quiz and finish it by Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Montreal time. Then you have a tutorial. That's basically a class taught by your teaching assistant. The teaching assistants are a wonderful team of graduate students in music theory. I work closely with them to teach this course. So those are scheduled either on Thursday or on Friday. You need to check your schedule to see which tutorial section you're in. So those are taught by the teaching assistant. This is the only part of the course that is at a fixed time. So it's a 90-minute class. You are required to attend and we'd like you to participate. So the idea is you should already have studied and spent some time with that week's material. You'll have got taken the reading quizzes. You'll be familiar with the subject matter before you get to the tutorial. So you'll be ready to work at the tutorial. How do you access the tutorial? Well, when you log into My Courses, remember I said there's a link for 001, and that's the main site, but there's also a link for your tutorial. You'll want to click the link for the tutorial to figure out how to access the tutorial. Lastly, I wanted to mention every week your TA will post the video from the tutorial. Those are just for review and study purposes. Uh, so it's not the idea like you can skip the tutorial and just watch the video. You should attend the tutorial. You should participate. Those videos are just there for review or for study, or if there's an emergency and you can't attend class, you can still watch the video. This should go without saying, but the videos are only for review and study, so please don't distribute the videos, don't download them, don't share them with anyone. Last thing for each week is an assignment. These assignments are designed to take about 60 to 90 minutes to complete. Some of you might do them a bit faster, some of you might take a bit longer, but that's about the average. And those are due on Mondays at 7 p.m. Montreal time. So the pace of a week sort of starts with reading the chapter, starts with the quizzes, then you get to tutorial where you get to work on it with your colleagues and with your teaching assistant, and by the end of tutorial you should be ready to do the assignment over the weekend and submit it by Monday night, and then we start the process over again with the next week's material. So you can think of these assignments as the culmination of each week's material. Just one exception, we have a couple Mondays that are holidays, so there's Labor Day and there's Thanksgiving, those are both holidays in Canada, uh, so if there's an assignment that would normally be due on that Monday, the deadline will instead be Tuesday, so just one day later, so you don't have an assignment due on a holiday. If you log into My Courses, notice in the lower right hand corner there's a calendar, and that lists all the deadlines. So anytime you're unclear, what am I supposed to be thinking about this next week? When are things due? There's a calendar listing the deadlines for the reading quizzes and for the assignments. Right up above it, you can see a calendar for September, and there's a dot on every date something is due. So for example, the first reading quiz would normally be due on a Thursday, but we've moved it for the first week only to Saturday. So you see a dot on Saturday, September 5th. 
the first assignment would normally be due on a Monday, but since um, September 7th is Labor Day, you'll see the dot is instead on September 8th. It's one day later because of the Labor Day holiday. So I've tried to make it easy for you to follow along, keep track of what you're supposed to be doing. I hope this will be helpful. If you log into My Courses and you click on Content, you'll see on the left-hand side that there is a folder for each week of the course. So right now we're in week one, which corresponds to chapter three of the textbook. So you can find here the link to the reading quiz for chapter three, a link to a discussion board if you have questions or comments about the reading about the chapter, a link to the analysis video for week one, and a link to assignment one. So this folder is designed to help you see everything you should be focusing on for this week. Then the next week we can move to week two and so on. So I hope this will help to keep things organized and easy to access and flexible. Okay, let's talk a little more specifically about some of the things you'll be doing each week. So I mentioned there are these things called reading quizzes, or those are also called inquisitive is the, the name that the mm -hmm. textbook gives to those. How do you access those? You need to sign into that website that comes with the textbook. So it's digital.wwnorton.com slash concise history two. You might want to just bookmark that on your computer so you'll have easy access. Remember, in order to access this site, it's free, but first you need to buy the textbook, either the ebook or the hardcover. If you buy the ebook, I think you're automatically registered for this website, but if you buy the paper version, I think the paper version comes with a code that you need to register in order to get access to this website. Once you're logged in, you want to click the link for Inquisitive, and there's an icon with a kind of a funny-looking rabbit with one eye. I don't know why the rabbit has one eye, but that's what you want to click, is the rabbit. Then what you want to do is in the upper right hand corner you'll see some gears. You want to click on those gears so you can sign up for our student set. That's how you sign up so that the website knows that you're in my class at McGill University. So click to add a student set or to join a student set and you want to enter our student set ID number that's 243690 and then enter your McGill ID number. You only have to do this once. Once you've done this, you should be all set for the rest of term. So once you've done this the first time, you'll now be registered to take reading quizzes for the rest of the term. So what is a reading quiz, one of these inquisitive quizzes, and how do they work? It's basically a game. So you can do it at your own pace as you're reading the chapter or after you read the chapter. It will give you quiz questions about the chapter. Some are easy, some are harder. You can wager points if you're very confident you have the right answer. You can wager fewer points if you're not as confident. And the idea is you keep playing until you're happy with your score. So once you've answered a certain number of questions, it will give you a grade. If you like your grade, you can stop. If you'd like to try for a higher grade, you can just keep playing. Eventually, you'll get 100% if you keep playing. There has been some research that this type of learning actually improves students' achievement by 12%. So we'll be doing this this week to help, with, uh, help us to get the most out of the reading and to digest the material from the reading before you go to tutorial. Another way to think of it is you're doing this sort of in lieu of something we could do in person in class. This is a way reading isn't just passive, but it's interactive and has a kind of a game quality to it. So I hope these are fun and I hope they'll help us learn. So we've talked about reading quizzes. Now let's talk about the analysis video. You access these through my courses. So go to my courses, content, then open week, whatever week we're on. So we'll start with week one, and then you'll find a link for analysis video one. That's week one. Next week is analysis video two, and so on. These videos are about 25 to 35 minutes long. That's kind of a long time to watch a music theory video, so I recommend watch a little bit, then take a break, have a snack, have a stretch, do whatever you like to do, and then come back and watch the rest. That's probably the best way to absorb it. Um, it's really easy to tune out in the middle. If you find yourself tuning out, pause it, take a break, and then come back. I recommend watching these after you read the chapter, but before you attend tutorial. So read the chapter first, maybe take the reading quiz, then watch this video. Or you could do 
read the chapter, watch the video, then take the reading quiz. Whatever you do, try to watch the video before you go to tutorial. There's a discussion board on my courses. So if you have comments or questions about the video, please share them. If you have a question, that probably means most students have a question. I would love to hear your questions and look forward to discussing them together. Or if you have an idea, like you think about a topic differently than the way I explained it, or if you have a better example or a different example, feel free to share that. The discussion board is there for you, and I will be monitoring it and responding. These videos are hosted on YouTube. That means that you can turn on computer-generated closed captioning, so if English is not your native language, or if um, you have difficulty with hearing, you can turn on the closed captioning. It's computer-generated, but it's pretty good. You can even turn on translation. Again, it's computer-generated translation, so it's not perfect, but if English is not your native language, feel free to turn on the closed captioning or use translation. If you're located in a country where you cannot view YouTube videos, please let me know and uh, send me an email and we can work out another solution for you. So how do you access these videos? Again, you go into My Courses, you go to Content, under Week 1, you see on the left the red arrow Analysis Video 1. Then in the center, the blue arrow, arrow you have to click Go to Discussion. So first you click on the left, then you click Go to Discussion. And here you'll find a discussion page. So what this is, is in the middle, that's, uh, you see an image where there's the arrow, there's a play button, you can press play, you can make it full screen. I recommend watching it on a computer or tablet with a large screen, a mobile phone is probably not ideal. And then also on the same page, see it says start a new thread. You can have a discussion, post a question, respond to what someone else has posted. So uh, this page has both the video itself and a discussion of the video. So I hope that's clear. Each week we also have an assignment. That's the last thing we do with each week's material. As I mentioned before, those assignments are due Monday evenings, 7 p.m. Montreal time, and that is a firm deadline. My courses is set up so that you can only submit up to that deadline. And unless there's some sort of emergency circumstances, we really want to observe that deadline so that starting the next day you can move on to the next week's material. So let's talk about the assignment. They're designed to take about 60 to 90 minutes to complete. That may vary. It depends if, if some of you may be a little faster, some a little slower. All of the assignments are in the course pack. So I recommend ordering the course pack from McGill's bookstore, Le James. And you can order it one day, come the next day to pick it up, and then you conveniently have all the assignments on paper in a spiral-bound um, uh, spiral bound course pack all in one place. If that's not convenient for you, for example, if you're not living in Montreal, you can also download and print the assignments from my courses. So either way works, whatever's convenient for you. Then you do the assignment by hand with a pencil, and you need to upload your finished work as a PDF file on my courses. So as I said before, you need to use a scanner or a scanning app not a photo using your camera. If you submit something that is not legible, if it's too dark or too small or too blurry, your TA won't be able to accept it for credit. So it's your responsibility to make a legible scan of your work and to upload that as a PDF on my courses. Lastly, please do not discuss assignments with anyone or collaborate on them with other students. Sorry, let me put that more clearly. Students should not be discussing the assignments together. Please don't discuss the assignments on the, on the discussion boards on my courses. Instead, I'll explain a bit later where you should go if you have questions about how to do an assignment. But don't work on them with other students. That is considered a violation of academic integrity or cheating or copying. And um, unfortunately, if that occurs, there uh, will be a disciplinary process. Okay, so let's talk about it. if you do have questions or need extra help. This could be if you want to go over the reading with someone, if you want to discuss the video, or especially if you want to go over an assignment, either an assignment that you already did and uh, received a mark for and want to go over it with someone, or an assignment that you're in the process of doing and want to get some help or ask some questions before you submit it. Here are some great ways to do that. 
So first of all, on my courses, there are discussion boards. So if you look in the week one folder, you'll find a discussion of the week one reading, and you'll find a discussion of the analysis video one. So for every week, there's something like this. So if you're reading and the book explains something differently than you're used to and you have a question, please, please, please pose the question. I would love to hear your questions and to share with you my thoughts. Also, you can answer one another's questions. So please uh, be a resource to one another as a whole classroom community. That can be really helpful. So there are those discussion boards. I just want to emphasize in these discussion boards, um, in the course outline, I explained our collegiality policy. It basically boils down to, please be kind to one another. So if someone asks a question that you think is obvious or that you think they don't understand, let's be kind in sharing helpful information. Let's not um, judge people who may have less background than, than other students, something like that. If you do encounter any um, inappropriate language, any kind of harassment or any kind of bullying on the um, discussion board, please bring that to my attention so I can take care of it. The discussion board also has a upvote and downvote button, so we'll use that only for um, posts that are off topic or posts that are in some way inappropriate, so feel free to downvote those if you want to move them down and let, let the instructor know, let me know if there's something I can do to try to resolve any issues that may arise on the discussion board. The basic idea is anything that will be appropriate to say in class, you can say on a discussion board. Anything that would be inappropriate in class would also be inappropriate on a discussion board. Office hours. So our team of TAs hold regular office hours when you can meet with them virtually. So if you go on my courses and look in the welcome and getting started folder, there's a schedule um, and it's just drop in. So um, every, every week we'll have the same schedule and if there's someone listed on a particular day and time, you can just drop in, no appointment is needed. It doesn't have to be your TA. You can meet with any TA. Um, so if, you, if I explained it one way and your TA explained it a different way, maybe yet another TA will have a different way of explaining it that might click with you. So uh, office hours are a great way to go over old assignments and to get help with new assignments. So look for that schedule in the welcome or getting started folder on my courses. Peer tutors. We have two peer tutors who are undergraduate students who took this course last year. They are available on an appointment basis. So if you need help at a time when there are no office hours, email the peer tutors, let them know a couple times you're free. Uh, keep in mind, they're students too, so they're not immediately available, but let them know sometimes in the next couple days, and they will do their best to set up a time to meet with you. Um, I just want to emphasize, it's important to start your assignments a little bit early, because if you start your assignment just before it's due, then you haven't really left time to go to office hours or to meet with a peer tutor. So I recommend starting a little bit early so you leave yourself some opportunities to get some help, get some clarification if it's needed. I wanted to mention I am also available on an appointment basis, so just email me your available times. My email address is in the course outline. That's also true for the peer tutors. Just take a look at the course outline so you know how to reach us. If in doubt, please ask. We are all here to help. So please don't be shy. We would like to be a resource for you. Just reach out if we can be helpful. That's about it. Welcome to the course. I'm looking forward to working together this term. It's going to be an adventure, learning and teaching in this format. It's a little bit new for everyone. So there will probably be some bumps along the way. And there might be a few things that are going to be harder than an in-person class. But there might be other ways that this course might be richer, more flexible, more independent than a typical class. I think succeeding in this course means pacing yourself throughout the week. So not to do everything the day it's due. If it were me, I would think about reading the chapter on Tuesday, maybe starting watching the video on Tuesday, maybe finish the video Wednesday, take the reading quiz on Thursday. That's how I've spaced out my learning over a couple days. And that gets me ready for my tutorial on Thursday or Friday. Maybe start a little bit of the assignment right after tutorial 
and then finish it up on Monday to submit Monday night. That might be a good schedule. So a little bit every day, sort of the same way you'd practice an instrument. That's better for learning than doing a lot right before it's due. That's probably not the best, uh, the best strategy for learning in this course. So I hope that's helpful. Let's all be there for one another as a community in this course throughout the semester so we can all learn and develop our music theory skills as much as possible. I hope you enjoy this course. I hope you get a lot out of it. Now, please go out and buy your textbook so you can get started. Bon courage. Good luck.